Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to talk about some romance books that have amazing pining in them. I have two other recommendation videos on my channel uh, with this trope, but I also call, I think I called them longing romances, so I'm like switching up the terminology, but it's the same thing. Longing, pining romances where one character is pining or longing after the other person. So I'll link those two rec videos down below if you want more recommendations. So let's get started, shall we? The first one that I would love to talk about is Finding Jean Kelly by Tori Jean. I will make any excuse at all to talk about this book. This is the romance between Evie and Liam. They are childhood friends turned enemies, dislike you, more dislike you, um, <laughs> to lovers romance. Um, it takes a while for them to get to lovers part, but anyway, Evie in her whole life has dreamed of like owning a bakery in Paris. And so she's been living in Paris for a few years, doing some stuff, trying to meet her goal of opening up a bakery. And her best friend ends up bringing Liam with him uh, while traveling Paris to go visit her. And she's like, why is Liam here? Why is, like, I don't like him. Like, why is he here? We don't like each other. Um, and so you figure out when you read the book why he's there. But uh, the two of them have to get into like a fake dating relationship and it turns into something more. But one person may or may not have been pining the entire time for Evie and just did not know how to express their feelings. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, um, I love Liam Kelly in here. Who he's one of the most ultimate book boyfriends ever. I love him with my whole heart and chest. This book is full of things that I love. It has amazing chronic illness representation. It has amazing baking elements. Like this book is just amazing. I love it. Liam has been pining for Evie for quite a long time and I am so thrilled that he finally got the woman of his dreams in this book. Next I have Broken Whispers by Neva Altaj, the second book in the Perfectly Imperfect series. This is a mafia romance. Uh, man this ring light is really having fun. <laughs> this cover um anyway so this shorter mafia romance is chock full of pining from the hero in here this is the romance between mikhail and bianca this is an arranged marriage between the two of them bianca has no idea who mikhail is other than the fact that he's like one of the most brutal men in the russian mafia um she's in the italian mafia she's like the daughter to an italian mob boss anyway they have to get an arranged marriage to kind of like align their mafia families um what she doesn't know is that mikhail has been longing and pining after her for quite a long time. Bianca is a very talented ballerina and Mikhail goes in and watches almost every single one of her performances because he's like in awe of this beautiful talented woman and just thinks that because of what he's gone through in his life like he would never ever deserve a woman like that but then when his mafia boss is like okay someone needs to marry Bianca because we need to form an alliance he's like more than willing to marry her. He's like, I want that woman, which leaves everyone shocked because Mikhail doesn't do stuff like that. Like he is the very stoic, closed off man. So they're shocked when he wants to marry a woman. Like, like they're like, I thought you were gonna be alone in your entire life. What are you doing? So um, no one knows that he's been pining after this woman for a very long time. So the two of them get married and have to uh, figure out how to have a um, new life together. And it is so good. Mikhail can get it at any freaking time. I love him. Our heroine in here also has a disability. She was injured and so it's very painful for her to talk so she communicates via ASL and Mikhail's sister is deaf and so um, he grew up signing and so like this book is just if you want a short like friends to lovers novella, I would definitely recommend Dad Bod Wingman by Carla Doyle. So our heroine in here and our hero have were like childhood best friends. Like they are best friends with each other and the hero moves back to the small town they grew up in um, and he opens up a bar. He runs into his friend again. Her name is Bailey. His name's Jensen. So Jensen and Bailey, they run back into each other again and Jensen finally gets enough courage to like finally ask his friend out on a date and she immediately says yes and he is like shocked he's like you do realize like i mean more than friends right like i mean like i want to take you on a date she's like uh yeah i've been waiting like yes i want to go on a date with you like <laughs> so this is very much a mutual pining situation both of them have been hardcore longing after each other this book was so cute and sweet but it's one of those books that's cute but hot like <laughs> them together like chef's kiss 
amazing. I have two more novellas if you're wanting to read a novella with this trope. So first I have The Gift by Cassie Mint. So Elizabeth is the mail carrier for this small snowy town, I think in Alaska, if I'm not mistaken. And she has a crush on like the town grump. His name's Alexei and he is grumpy as can be, but she cannot help this huge crush that she has on him. She's been having this crush for like months, but I think he's there in this town on like a deadline. He's a scientist and he's only there for a short amount of time to like do his research. And so she like, I finally gets up enough nerve to finally like put herself out there. What she doesn't know is that Alexei has a reciprocating crush on Elizabeth and the two of them are very awkward and cute but it turns into something like amazing between the two of them and yeah both of them have been pining and longing after each other for quite a long time they were just too awkward and shy like to do anything about it because they didn't think the other person would want like anything to do with them because like Alexei is this big smart man thinks that he'd never want Elizabeth because she's like a simple mail carrier and then Alexei is just like this beautiful woman would never want me and so like because of their like insecurities they both think the other person wouldn't want them but man do they want them okay another novella is Bayou Bruiser by Jessica Kane. so this is the romance between Benny and Fawn so Benny lives kind of like a solitude life out in the middle of nowhere in the woods and he loves to kind of um like take in injured animals treat them if they're sick or injured and like send them back like animals love him like, like he's this gentle burly giant i love him so much anyway what he doesn't know is that a neighboring property of his is where fawn lives with her father she sometimes like sees this big giant man like be a total softy to animals and she's just like quietly pining after him in the woods um but then one day her father who's abusive locks her in the basement for whatever reason benny ends up on his doorstep trying to figure out what's going on because something's going on he's like something suspicious going on so he goes to the basement finds fawn locked up and takes her back to his house to care for her and um hopefully put her in a better situation than what she's currently in and fawn is just like he's my prince charming he saved me from the big mad man like i love him um and it was super cute and super sweet i wanted more from this like i just wanted more when reading this book i know we're nowhere near holiday season but this one definitely feels like the pining trope this is wrapped up in you by talia hibbert both of these characters have been mutually pining after each other for years and they've done nothing done nothing until this book until when this book takes place so here in the heroine they've been best friends for quite a few years the hero like grew up closer to the heroine's like brother um they were next door neighbors he never really had anywhere to go during christmas time so he was always invited to come to christmas with them and go over to their grandmother's house they've never broken tradition like he comes even when they're older like comes over to over to her grandmother's house every single christmas and this year he has decided to finally tell our heroine how he feels about her. He's been crushing after her for so long. And when he finally reveals the pent up feelings he's been having towards uh, Abby, the heroine, she just doesn't believe him. She's like, you like me? I don't believe it. Like, I think you need to like figure out your feelings because there's no way you could like me um, because Abby feels like she's not worthy for him. He's like a famous actor now in America, but man, he'll try everything to like convince Abby that he is like totally in love with her. She's been in love with him for years also. So the two of them are kind of like fighting their feelings and trying to like gr grip with them, like come to grips with their feelings as well. This book has mutual pining galore. This is A Touch of Stone and Snow by Mean Levine, fantasy romance, friends to lovers, like their entire lives they've saved themselves for each other. Like they know that this is their soulmate, that this is the person they're gonna spend their, their rest of their lives with. But they haven't really admitted that to each other. Lizin is a part of the Cathan, Cathan army. Um, and she is the only survivor from this battle and her people think that she's cursed because of it. They exile her from their village. Um, and that just so happens to be where her best friend, Arax lives. And he is like devastated. Um, but he needs to complete a mission and he goes and finds Listen to help him complete the mission. But then that's just an excuse for him to go find Listen again um, because that's his best friend. That's who he knows he's going to like spend the rest of his life with. So they like complete this quest together while trying to come to grips with the feelings that they've been having for quite a long time. That's all I can say about this book without spoiling it because like a lot of stuff happens in here in this series in general. So like Mila Vane can do like no wrong with fantasy romances. She is 
fantastic. All the rest of the books that I have are historical romances. So first I have Seduce Me a Sunrise by Lisa Kleypas. This is the romance between Kev and Wynn and this is another mutual pining situation. The two of them have been in love with each other ever since they were kids. So Wynn I believe is the oldest daughter a part of the Hathaway, no second oldest daughter a part of the Hathaway family. And when she was younger her father ended up bringing home Kev who was a Romani boy who I believe was like on death's door in like an alley somewhere brings him home and nurses him back to health and Kev basically gets adopted into their family and ever since they were younger like they have been best friends in each other's lives for whatever reason like they are there for each other they cannot do life without the other person but it jumps to years later like they're both still in love with each other they've never admitted it they just give longing looks at one another um and Kev thinks that he's not worthy enough for beautiful Wynn. Wynn ends up becoming very ill and she goes away to hopefully get better for a few months. And when she comes back, there's this guy on her arm who was her doctor. And that kind of sparks a little jealousy from Kev. And he's gonna try everything to like make Wynn his, but he's also at the same time, feels like he doesn't deserve her. So it's like this battle in his brain. So um, there's a lot going on in here, a lot of angst, a lot of drama, but I just love this romance so much. Another one in the Hathaway series that has amazing pining is Love in the Afternoon. This is a romance between Christopher and Beatrix. So Beatrix is actually the youngest uh, sibling in the Hathaway family. And this pining is definitely more one-sided because Christopher has no idea that he's been in correspondence with Beatrix for quite a long time. So this book starts out with Beatrix and her friend Prudence. Um, Prudence has been writing these letters to Christopher um, for a few weeks now he's off at war and Christopher is finding these letters from Prudence to be like soulless in his life in the very mess of war obviously um and Prudence is kind of like done she's like eh, I don't feel like writing to him anymore like eh but then Beatrix is like this man is obviously going through like a lot he needs some kind of distraction in his life other than war like how about I just keep writing the letters like I don't mind and Prudence is like Go ahead. Beatrix does just that for like months, if not years. She's been writing letters to Christopher. They've been falling in love with each other over letters. Um, but Beatrix vividly remembers like growing up, like Christopher hates Beatrix. Like he does not like her. And so she's never revealed herself to be herself. Like he thinks this whole time he's been messaging Prudence. So when the war is finally over and he goes back home, like he wants to finally marry the woman that he's been in love with for a while. But then when he comes in contact with Prudence again, he's like, this is not the woman I've been talking to. Like, who is this woman? So he's trying to find out who he's actually been writing letters to for all this time. And so Beatrix has been pining after Christopher for so long because she feels like he would never want her because she knows that Christopher doesn't like her. So that's all I'm gonna leave you with. I love this one so much. It's one of my favorite historicals. And the last one that I have to mention is a Bridgerton book. I have When He Was Wicked. This one definitely has a lot of pining. One of the most like epic pinings from a hero ever. Like this woman is married and he is still in love with her. This is the romance between Francesca and Michael. So this is book number six. This is like one of the only books that I adamantly really enjoyed from this series. Um, so Francesca in here, she's actually married to Michael's cousin in this book, but then his cousin ends up dying. And this whole time, ever since Michael met Francesca, he has been in love with her completely had a reason though with her and so when they come in contact again like a few years after his cousin has passed away like he is finding it so hard not to tell Francesca how he feels about her so it's like full of angst like and tension between the two of them because Francesca is like dealing with this like inner turmoil of like am I in love with my husband's cousin like how wrong is that so like a lot of stuff is going on in here. I really enjoyed this one. If you want to read a Bridgerton book that I know you'll like, you got to pick this one up. I know some people don't like it. I feel like the majority of people do. Anyways, so there you have it. Those were 10 romances with amazing pining in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any pink heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.